This is the second interview of the second day of OER Congress. And we are here with Cable Green. And there's one story that Jan Neumann always tells about you, that you walked into the room in 2012 in Paris and said, I have the greatest job on the world. Is it true? And what is it? That's true. I, I did say that. Well, I still have the greatest job in the world, I think. I work at uh, Creative Commons. I'm the director of Open Education. And my job is to help educators all around the world share. So we're talking about hard facts. It looks like a peaceful environment here. This is the, I don't know, propaganda of Slovenia, but it's we're true. It really, it really looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we talk about copyright and uh, OER. So what's more important, fixing copyright or promoting OER? Well, I, I think both. Uh, certainly, copyright reform is is critical, and uh, several of our community members across the world are working on copyright reform. Copyright uh, still, it's it's automatic. It would be nice if uh, you had to register for copyright. Um, copyright lasts too long before a work goes into the public domain. It would be nice if the term of copyright was shortened. Uh, it would be nice to have short terms, and then you had to renew those terms. Uh, and it's also true that the exceptions and limitations uh, to copyright for things like education use or uh, for library, librarian use or other uses um, are not expansive enough, and fair use and fair dealing rights are also fairly narrow. It would be nice to see those uh, broader. Um, copyright reform is, is very difficult. Um, it's important work. It's hard work because... Uh, when, when the open movement is advocating for copyright reform, we're up against uh, some serious muscle on the other side. Um, the, the music industry, the movie industry, um, that have a lot of money and a lot of lawyers and are, have vested interests in maintaining old business models that were created in a time of scarcity, um, do not want to have conversations about what copyright should look like in a time of abundance, in, a, in the digital world that we live in. Um, so that's what I have to say about copyright reform. It's important work. We need to do it. Um, it's also true that we don't have to wait for copyright reform, which is kind of the point uh, or one of the points of Creative Commons licenses is uh, that you can hack copyright today. Um, you can, uh, people can keep their copyright and they can add an open license to their work. Um, and that's what Creative Commons licenses are all about in education. Um, if you're an educator, you don't have to wait for a copyright to be reformed. Uh, you can share your work today uh, under a permissive uh, Creative Commons license where you, the author, get to choose what freedoms and permissions you're giving to the public. Yeah, which I found interesting in Germany is to see that copyright issues are driving educators into OER and stopping them because they're afraid they might do something wrong. And at the same time, they're searching for alternatives. Is this something we see in other countries in the world too? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, you know, educators are, are usually teachers, sometimes researchers. Um, they're not copyright experts. Most educators are, are not lawyers. Um, I was a professor a long time ago. I'm not a lawyer. I've not been trained as a lawyer. And so trying to understand the nuances of copyright is not something that we were trained to do, um, nor frankly is it uh, one of our main responsibilities in our jobs as, as educators. That being said, copyright is the law, and uh, we need to, as educators, understand copyright, uh, and, uh, and we need to, uh, you know, to the extent you want to follow the law, you need to understand it so that you can follow copyright's law. That being said, copyright's um, oftentimes very restrictive to what we want to do as creators, as innovators, as educators uh, with, with educational resources. Now, the good news is that educators are not alone. They don't have to figure this out by themselves. Um, there's oftentimes uh, librarians who are copyright experts uh, at colleges or universities or schools. Um, and then you've got organizations like, like ours, like Creative Commons, which says, Yes, copyright is important, it's complex, but if you add an open license to your work, you're compliant with copyright, it's legal, you don't need to get a bunch of lawyers involved, you can just add a license to your work and share it under the terms that you choose. Could you say the harder the, the struggle with copyright, the more people get into open and free licensing? I think that's right. I think that um, certainly that was the case for me. Um, Yeah, I think uh, as educators try to find the resources that they want and they find that it's all rights reserved copyright, um, oftentimes they find these things on the web where they think, oh, I found it on the web, it's free, I can use it, but oh, wait, it says all rights reserved copyright. And I've learned through my maybe my school librarian that I can't take that 
and use it. Uh, maybe I can use it under fair use or fair dealing rights under certain conditions, uh, but I probably can't take it and copy it for my entire school or all my students uh, year after year after year. Uh, and so copyright is restricting my ability to do what I need to do in my class. Therefore, I'm going to move to open, move to open educational resources. Thank you, Cable. Great talking to you. All the best for your work and uh, enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. German audience, don't do this at home. We do not have fair use in Germany. So, <laughs> uh, if you see this uh, live, then you can switch the channel now. We will be ending our live stream on Twitter, but there is a live stream for the virtual conference. And there is a keynote going on right now. And it's what? Uh, the keynote is, uh, is Ryan Merkley, my boss. Uh, he's the CEO of Creative Commons, and uh, we're all excited to hear him. He uh, was asked to be uh, bold about the future, uh, and he won't pull any punches. He's going to tell it uh, exactly as we see it and, and how we think education can be fundamentally changed. I know you're talking with uh, Neil Butcher, I think, uh, in the last interview, and I hope Neil talked about uh, procurement and how we need to... We need to think about all the money that we have in the education system and how we procure content today and how we spend that money. And it's incredibly wasteful. And what's even more uh, damaging, I think, to us as, as educators now is that the new models that, that publishers are putting out, um, we don't own the academic content anymore. They're leasing it to us. It's DRM encumbered. So it's got digital rights management on it or TPM. Um, we... Uh, they take it away after we stop paying the lease fee. They're starting to do things, like they, the publishers, are starting to do things like embed the cost of educational resources into tuition. So tuition's getting inflated, but good news, everybody gets free textbooks and other educational resources. And of course, they're not free. Um, and so we need to, I think, uh, take stock of what our existing expenditures are on public education especially, and then ask ourselves, are we leveraging the tools of the day to get the maximum impact, the highest efficiency, the best quality of educational resources and other services that we need to uh, teach students and create positive learning environments? And I would argue that we're not anywhere near close to that goal. Um, I, I think we can get there. We just have to have an honest accounting of how much do we spend. And if we leveraged digital, the internet, and Creative Commons licensing, and we took all that money, and instead of giving it to publishers and not owning anything, what if we took all that money and built open educational resources? What if we took the money for research and built open access journals? Um, I think we could have a better... Uh, across the board, better products, better services for a lot less money, and we, the public, would own all of it. Great. So switch the channel, join the virtual congress, or if you're seeing the recording, search for a video, Ryan Merkley, keynote, OER Congress. We'll put a link under this video. Thanks and bye.